May the glorious light of the Son of God shine upon you. The abiding love of the Father fill your hearts and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, the loving plan of your wisdom took flesh in Jesus Christ and changed mankind's history by his command of perfect love. May our fulfillment of his command reflect your wisdom and bring your salvation to the ends of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading this noon comes from the first epistle of St. John, 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you eternal life, which was with the father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading this noon is actually from a church mother, uh, uh, Helen Barrett Montgomery, uh, and uh, she lived 1861 to 1934. And uh, this is from a, a, a work called, And Blessed Is She, Sermons by Women. And uh, Helen Barrett Montgomery writes, if we live in the light as he is in the light, says John, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ is cleansing us from all sin. First John 1 John 1.7. The trees learned that secret long ago and in every characteristic spread of bough and patterning twig, we see its quiet, dim persistence to live in the light as he is in the light. Yet humans often forget this primary lesson of spiritual and physical health and struggle into shadows as if they belonged there, cherishing their griefs, wrapping themselves in their sorrows, living defeated and thwarted and selfish lives, but not righteous men. They are like trees planted. They rejoice in God, even from prisons of disease, poverty, and death. They clap their hands as do the trees 
and rejoice in God forevermore. Then trees bring forth their fruit also in due season. So does character. Its season of dropping fruit is perpetual. You find the fruit of its life spring up in the most unlikely and distant places, like palm nuts in a coral reef. The heart of a tree is to give, and so is the heart of a good man. In the apples, the peaches, the cherries, the oranges, the mangoes, the guavas, the tree expresses its deepest, deepest self. It gives itself to mankind. So too, the saints bear fruit for God. In Christ abiding, they bear much fruit. For this they were born, and this is hid the secret of their lives. It is the joy and beauty of the world. Servants of all like him, the serving man, they pour out the riches and fragrance and flavor of their goodness in abiding fruit. Here ends the reading from Helen Barrett Montgomery. And I just thought it was extraordinary for me this week when on Sunday, we were looking at the images of the rooted trees. And yesterday, we spent a lot of time talking about God as light from light, true God from true God, um, referring to Jesus Christ. And we talked about an ancient hymn celebrating light. And here we have a reading that's using both of those in, in the, the tree that is bearing fruit, but the tree constantly spreading and opening to be nourished by the light, which we also know um, scientifically is needed for photosynthesis and the greening of the leaves and, and the life of the tree. And just so, so interesting that the images of trees and bearing fruit that we first on Sunday looked at being rooted and now today making sure that we are in the light as he is in the light and uh, just wonderful images, especially as the daylight hours are increasing. And I know I give thanks for that. Uh, when we talked yesterday about the uh, hymn of Hail Gladdening Light, um, there was a reflection from an early church father that, you know, when the shadows came in the evening and they lit an oil lamp, they always gave thanks for having that light. Now, I will say in this day and age, sometimes we have too much light and too much work, work, work in the electric light. But on the other hand, there are times when I think we're not thankful that we can just flip a switch and have light, or there's other ways in which there's light that comes to us to see and be safe and to guide us. But most of all, we look to Christ, the light of the world, who shines and provides healing and hope and safety and guidance and deliverance for us, no matter if it's daylight or nighttime, whether we have electric light or lamp light or flashlight, uh, the light of Christ is always there for us. And for that, we give thanks. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.